no, we're talking about marriage independence, where we actually, there's certain things that ail marriages, and I think that we should claim independence from those things that we get from other people or that have influenced how we have our marriage or marriages. And five, four, three, two, one. Whether you've been married one or 20 plus years, at some point, you realize you were married into crazy. And that's what our podcast is all about. We offer love, laughter, and a dose of reality as we unpack this crazy thing called marriage. So sit back, relax, and get your ear hustle on. It's time to start the conversation. All right, let's go. Hey everyone, this is Snooks. And Lovey. Have you ever felt that you need additional assistance enhancing your intimacy? Uh, wait, what are you talking about? Okay, I'm not talking about in the bedroom. I'm talking about making the connection with your partner. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know what? There's an app for that. Yeah, and it's called Intimately Us. (laughs) I love that app because you know what? You get to play so many different games. Yeah, you're interrupting. They have Battleship. (laughs) And Sexy Twister, which is one of my favorites. And they also have uh, Conversation Starters and... Oh, the, I love the how-to. There's a how-to where you can actually learn techniques and things that you want to try with each other along with the sex exploration list. <laughs> so I was going to say, they also have great date ideas. So if this sounds good to you, download the app at r.intimately.us forward slash M-I-C. That's r.intimately.us forward slash M-I-C. The link will be in the show notes. Now let's get ready for the podcast. Welcome to episode 200, woo woo. 200 zero zero of the Married in a Crazy podcast with Snooks and Lovey. I'm Lovey. I'm Snooks. And we want to welcome each and every one of you to our 200th milestone episode. So, is, that's, is every hundred an, a milestone? It sure is, my book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, but when you think about I was it, asking. that's 200 straight weeks. It was actually a little bit more than that because we weren't always numbering um, like we should have been, or I should have been. I say we, but it was really me. But this is number 200. How do you feel about having 200 podcasts minimum underneath your belt? <laughs> um, great. No, nah, I, don't, I don't know. I didn't. I feel like um, part of me feels like we've been doing it a long time, but it's really only just about four years. Three years. Three? Three. Uh, well, four. not quite Not quite four. Uh, Almost four. Figure late August, early September of 2018. So, I mean, you know, just it, it I, I don't know. It's just been a, a part of who we are for so, a long time. As you can tell, you can sense the excitement in her voice. No, I, I don't know what to say. No, okay, so here's the thing. For those of you that are new, to the podcast. Welcome. We welcome each and every one of you. Um, We are a married couple that have been together for 26 years, married 25, Mm -hmm. and we've gone through a lot of stuff. So go back and listen to our very first episode and we highlight, go back uh, 200 episodes ago. I love saying that. That's a long time ago. And listen to the very first podcast and it's called Bamboozled and you'll be able to hear the drama, at least the beginnings of the drama. And then we begin to (laughs) lay stuff out then jump over to episode number five and then you can hear about um how i got stabbed by her ex-boyfriend and all the things that ensued from there and married into crazy about us is about us sharing our platform how we coach but on the principles of crazy and crazy stands for compassionate real accountable zealous and yielding look you didn't even have to cue me i was just jumped right in She, she, she was right there jane on the spot and so we talk about those things and, and we bring in other people to interview all of that. So that's what the podcast is really all about, helping people get from where they are right now in their marriage to getting to the next level. Um, later on in our episodes, we talked about how Snooks in year four asked for a divorce. We had to navigate that process while we almost got divorced. And it's just a lot of different things. And here we are 25 years later hmm. in our marriage, still going strong, still building, still learning. And we invite you to participate in that. And so one way that you can actually make sure is to, wherever you're listening, please go and leave a review and a, re- and a 
a rating. That's my five. I'm sorry. For those who cannot see me, I put my hand up for five. Not a high five, but for five stars. And if Snook sounds tired to you, because she sounds tired to me, it's for I'm good sorry. reason. She is um, burning the candle at, at every end. Uh, between getting her master's, her uh, master's in social work, and then we've got Isaiah, our grandson, uh, that has been with us. We had a massive party yesterday um, over with all the cousins to get all the littles over here to the house um, so that the little ones could actually play together and build that unity and camaraderie within the family. And just running around today, it's just been a lot. And I, I appreciate you for being here to do the podcast with me. Okay. Well, I didn't think I sounded that tired, but thank you. You did. Or you're welcome. Well, because we know what kind of energy you usually have. So do us that favor. Go to Apple Podcasts. Not that they knew they don't. Spotify. <laughs> and leave that rating and a review. But then also go over to MeridaIntoCrazy.com and take a look around. You can look at our tab. There's a clothing store there that's got a bunch of different items that are available. Because people should know by your clothing how crazy your marriage really is. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing you can do is go there. And, of course, Facebook. If you're on Facebook, go to Iron Tribe, the marriage community, because we talk about building an Iron Tribe, and that's based off of um, the uh, it's a scripture. It's uh, Proverbs 27, 17, and it talks about iron sharpening iron. Mm -hmm. Well, how we look at it is um, we as couples should be sharpening each other, you know. So that's what the Iron Tribe is really about. You should have an Iron Tribe for those moments when you don't see eye to eye and you have just that um, that team of individuals that you who who you can trust that have um, your marriage's best interest at heart. You know, exactly. no ulterior motives or anything like that. So, here's a cool thing. Um, right now we're recording on the fourth of July. So if you hear explosions and yeah, screaming, we're not living. <laughs> we don't live in a gun zone where it's literally Fourth of July fireworks. Even the illegal ones, I think that's oh, the there's only a lot of illegal that are... ones that are going off. <laughs> yeah. So it might sound like we're in a battle zone, but we really aren't. It's just the 4th of July, which I, I think begs discussion when we're talking about Independence Day. I'm not going to go anything very political, but what we are going to talk about is, you know, I think that we should declare a marriage Independence Day. Okay. So what? Well, first, let's let's. Because when you say marriage independence, that means, to me, it means independent. I'm independent of you. So <laughs> no, is that not, what you're talking about? Nope, I'm not talking about us getting away from each other or are you guys getting away from your spouses either. Uh, what we are talking about, or at least what I'm trying to bring up, okay. from a marriage independence standpoint, let's, let's create marriages that are independent of the baggage that other people gave us and how we, how we perceive what marriage is supposed to be. When I say that, you know, we talked about a baton of marriage being passed off to each other. And it's like, well, why do you do what you do? Or why do you think the way you think? Well, that's the way my parents did it. That's the way my grandparents did it. That's the way my auntie and uncle did it. No, I'm talking about marriage independence where we actually, there's certain things that ail marriages. And I think that we should claim independence from those things that we get from other people or that have influenced how we have our marriage or marriages and we should claim independence from that. And more specifically, there's five things that I came across on the internet. First of all, I just want to say, um, I don't know, did y'all pick up on it? Because I did when he said baggage. It wasn't that pointed, you, it was behind you. It was like, I'm like, how come he didn't do baggage the other way? And then <laughs> when he said, which ails, and then you did it again. So, For those hey, of you, you know what? I, come on, let's. She's Whatever. acting like I'm motioning towards her, but I was motioning behind her. I in guess on my, camera, it looks like yeah, I'm pointing at you. Yeah, I was like, here. what? That's all I know if you... I, I caught your I, face. I, like, I was, I like, was what like, what the heck? Look. You no. to so no there, shade? There's five things. So if you go to marriage.com or a variety of other websites that are out there, they talk about um, there being five causes of marriage problems. And I think we should claim independence from those problems. Okay. But here's the thing. Um... In true fashion, I want to say that these things, these things that were given to us, a lot of times we adopt ways or values or methodologies, whatever you want to call them, from other people, from things Core that were modeled for us. There we go, principles. Um, or the way you should act in a marriage. And <laughs> for no rhyme or reason, 
We just do what we were shown or what was modeled for us. And we need to get away from that. Much like if you look at right now, it's 4th of July, people are shooting off fireworks and um, it's all about Independence Day for the United States, right? Getting away from England. Well, that wasn't even, how do I even want to put this? It's, it's when they developed the Constitution, they actually borrowed from what was called the Magna Carta, right? That was in the Magna Carta. So during, so the Magna Carta um, was something that the colonists, um, I want to call this back in England, they, they, these barons came up with these rules, these things, these principles, so they can actually end up keep their property and their livelihood. And they weren't, you know, uh, to get away from tyranny. So during the American Revolution, the Magna Carta served as uh, inspiration and justify the actions on liberty's defense. So what they did was, they, the, the colonists, they believed that they were entitled to the same rights as Englishmen, rights that were guaranteed in the Magna Carta. So they embedded those rights into the states and later into the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. I was going to say, so the when you're talking about the Magna Carta, it just reminded me of the Bill of Rights, but you just said it. Yeah. So. And, and so, and I, I say all of that, not to bore you with history american history because i love history but go ahead but what it is 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 to show you that maybe the magna carta for our marriages were the things that were you know, that we witnessed our grandparents or we witnessed our parents or we witnessed so you're you know, saying we're borrowing the actions of those who came before us um good or bad um and we kind of apply it to our current situation right exactly take which Borrow from the past what was good and discard those things that are negative. Like a good example is like the Fifth Amendment of the Constitution. You know, the one where it says like, no person shall uh, be deprived of life, liberty, property, um, without due process of law. That's a direct descendant of the Magna Carta's guarantee of proceedings according to the law of the land. Hmm. They didn't adopt everything in the Magna Carta. Mm -hmm. They just picked the things that they thought were relevant. Some stuff they like. And I think we should do the exact same thing when it comes to our marriages, where... We witnessed some things like bad communication. There's five things I'm going to call out okay. and I want us to talk about them that we should claim independence from. Mm -hmm. First thing being miscommunication. Okay. How many times have you witnessed in previous, or I would say not previous relationships, but in our parents or our aunts, uncles, friends, whomever that modeled marriage for us, that there was a good amount of miscommunication? Oh, I, I'm, I think it's frequently. Um... I, I think that we've even had some miscommunication. Um, it uh, sometimes it doesn't come out as miscommunication. Um, I I don't know where you wanted to take it, but I just want to say it's mis it, it's conveyed as miscommunication when you address it. Does that make sense? Because how do I know that it's miscommunication if I'm not telling you? How am I saying this? Um, it's like I have to bring it to your attention to let you know that, hey, that wasn't cool. Right. So then you understand that, oh, I got that wrong. So that's when it's miscommunication. Well, it's, and it's tough because if you're unclear about your feelings, um, setting boundaries, you know, even, even talking about expectations for your marriage, right? You're likely to incur or encounter some type of marital problems, but that all goes back to miscommunication. And, and it's about having open door. We, we were talking with one of our clients and you know, they, they have a thing, and we've talked about this with many of our clients and they call it different things. Yeah. But let's call, it, let, let's call it a board meeting where once a week you get together with your spouse and you have what we'll call a board meeting, meaning you'll sit down and you wanna talk about the things that happened over the course of last week Things you understood, didn't understand, liked, didn't like, but just having a, a like a what we used to call a coming to Jesus meeting. You know, where we're just gonna put it all out on the table, have mm -hmm. a discussion. So that way there's no miscommunication. Because occasionally things happen and I just completely misunderstood what you meant. Right. And I misunderstood. I I'm I I you were saying something and I took it the wrong way. So it's not always what you say It's sometimes just what I hear because you could have said all everything right. But if I this is what I heard or, you know, now I feel some kind of way, you could be like, why are you tripping? All I said was, well, I'm like, that's not what I heard. And then so. things escalate quickly. Mm -hmm. So 
kind of like to your point about the board meeting too. I think that that's a good thing to have uh, set aside a day for when we have our discussion about the things that we have challenges with in our in our relationships um, because it prevents the every single day when you feel like, oh my God, here I go, here she go, or here he goes, gonna be nagging me about something. And every single day I come home, it's the same thing, I'm tired of this. So if we set a meeting or whatever, however we call it, you don't have to worry about the nag session. Um, Cause I'm always constantly telling you about something I don't like or whatever. I will put it on the list and come Wednesday or Thursday or Friday or whatever day your meeting is on, uh, we'll discuss it at that point. So we're still getting our needs met as far as I'm still being able to tell you and I, I'm hoping that you're hearing me. Um, it's not so much like, oh, I gotta, I, I think it, it, it takes out the, I gotta walk on eggshells too because if I say something, you're gonna get mad, but maybe you're getting frustrated because you just said something to me yesterday, you right. know, so. Right, and so you table it to that time. So that's something to think about and pick a day. <laughs> that, that's not, the, I don't wanna say this, I'm over here stuttering. Pick the least challenging day of the week. Don't try and have this meeting on the day where you got like 25 different things stacked up that you need to accomplish or you yeah. got a deadline the next day or so your mind's not really going to be there. Pick the least intrusive day of the week to have your meeting. Mm -hmm. So think about that. Um, another thing that we need to claim independence from is setting unrealistic expectations for our marriage. So I can't expect for you to come home with roses or candy and jewelry every day. That's no. Maybe roses and candy to a certain extent, but jewelry. I, look, okay, look. So that's something that needs to be What's talked wrong? about. <laughs> What's wrong with jewelry? <laughs> look, not having clear expectations about your marriage or the partnership or however you want to call it. Um, how basically not, without having clear expectations about how things are supposed to work between the two of you, that's going to cause some problems. Yeah, that that right there in itself is a big mis misunderstanding or miscommunication. Um, you have to talk about the things that you like, the things that you don't like, and figure out how to navigate them. Because um, in every relationship, somebody's going to do, each of us, we do stuff that the other person just doesn't like, you know. So you can't, I can't expect you to be perfect all the time. You can't expect me to be perfect all the time or actually any other time because we're not perfect beings so if we set the expectation and know that there are going to be some challenges sometimes i'm going to get it wrong you know that's where we need to operate in some grace i agree and again when you have that meeting maybe it's about setting up an opportunity like what, what are you looking for in this marriage how, how are your needs being met? And how are your needs not being met? Mm -hmm. Have that realistic conversation about, okay, and, and set a guide. Like, okay, well, how do we make sure that we're both being fed, so to speak, mm -hmm. within this marriage? Right. Let's set some expectations up, some rules of engagement, and let's adhere to these things. I can't guarantee that all your needs are going to be met, just like you can't guarantee that all my needs are going to be met. But let's find that overlap mm -hmm. where we're going to be happy and we can continue to grow because that overlap will grow as we gain experience in meeting the existing needs, but we have to have realistic expectations. Mm -hmm. That's true. So that's one thing that you can do to help you to actually have independence from having unrealistic expectations. Right. So uh, then the next one, or another one is uh, lack of privacy. Mm -hmm. And basically that's about how you take information that you and your and your partner are talking about and you're sharing it with other people. Um, so that means that you're putting basically, okay, putting your business out in the streets. Right. So we never want to do that, first of all, because that's just not cool. But also you don't want to do that because what you're doing is you're putting un, um, unnecessary burden or stress onto your partner. Because if I say something to someone that lovey said to me and 
we he thinking it's, it stops here if it gets back to him he's gonna be like what you know now now the trust is not there like bro what's wrong with you <laughs> why are you telling people you know blah 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 you got was it you got me out here looking crazy or whatever well, yeah it's like i don't want, i don't want your mom knowing all my business or our our business i don't want your sister knowing or your cousins i don't want to have to meet up with your brother and all of a sudden we, we chop it up he's like hey i just want to tell you the other day you was wrong when you said da, 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 da. my sister I'm like wait well hold on mm -hmm. how do you even know about that right you know that's something that we need to work out right you need to step out our kool-aid <laughs> And well, I mean, but no one's gonna be in your Kool Aid if you ain't pouring it. Uh, if you ain't pouring it into their glass, right. so so yeah, quit pouring Kool Aid in other people's cups that don't need the Kool Aid. Right. Somebody out there's like, what the heck are they talking about? <laughs> Kool Aid and no, and, and that's truth. And we're big. We're really, really big on um, privacy. And maybe it's because when we when we work with our clients, you know, because we do coach and we have a we have a number of. Uh, individual as well as couples that we coach and privacy is at the forefront of everything that we do mm -hmm. but it shouldn't just be about a professional standard it's about a an emotional and uh, to a certain extent spiritual we have to know that we trust each other i gotta trust that right. when i talk to my spouse that we are in a vault that you're only talking to your spouse right that i'm only talking to my spouse mm -hmm. now if we agree like hey you know i just i need somebody to talk to about this because we're having some issues you mind if i talk i'm gonna, and somebody's gonna say no i don't want you talking to your sister i need to talk to somebody and it might not be your coach it might not be your counselor but you need to have a trusted person that you can speak to that's in it for your marriage that's where the iron tribe comes in also have that iron tribe established mm -hmm. so you have people that are down for your marriage not just down for you because it's easy for your boys to be like yeah i got your back man you know you need to leave her or it's good i mean so it's easy for her to have her girls, her sisters, you know, her sorors, whatever, that always are down for her. But who's down for your marriage, for your covenant? Mm -hmm. Those are the people that you should have somebody to vent to, but not to the point where you're, like, putting all your business out in the streets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you always want somebody to, to have be able to have a conversation with. Um, and though we, we say, well, just talk to your spouse. Well, there are times when I'm like, ugh, I don't feel like talking to Lovey about this. And it's not... But then that goes back to um, un the, um, unrealistic expectations also because I'm not going to talk to you about every single thing at every single time. You know what I'm saying? Right, and I may not want to hear it. Well, that's why I won't be talking to you. <laughs> it's probably be like, well, it, it, it's pertinent. I got, I got, I got stuff to do. <laughs> so claim your independence from having a lack of privacy. Yeah. Now, this next one's a little more difficult because we're human. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say we want to claim independence from having unnecessary arguments. Um, not just arguments. And I'm not saying that some arguments, sometimes you're going to have heated exchanges. Mm -hmm. and I don't know that I necessarily want to call them arguments, but you're going to have these moments where there's, um, uh, what do I want to call them? Debates? Enthusiastic debates, oh, okay. enthusiastic disagreements. Mm -hmm. where you both are just going at it and it becomes an argument. Now, if that's all you do, that's a problem. Yeah, because without harmony, how are you supposed to? I mean, our our relationships are, are the things that we want to be in. No one's forcing you to be in. It's not, it's not jail. It shouldn't be looked at as jail or prison or anything like that. And if that is what you think your marriage is or your partnership is then it's time to uh get some coaching or something right you and know you can go to marriedintocrazy.com <laughs> and uh hit that coaching tab and set up a discovery call but back to your point there are going to be disagreements or we'll call them arguments or whatever um no one is saying that you will never argue because you, you will don't get along all the time you don't you are not of the same thought all the time you know um if you got along all the time or the, one of you isn't necessary because if there was just a like, yeah. homogenous thought where it was all exactly the same you don't want it to be just you know step well, nobody wants a stepford wife or a stepford husband so to speak to where it's just like sure you know, whatever you like yeah because that even initially you might be like heck yeah this is what i'm talking about but then pretty soon you'd be like oh my gosh can we have a real conversation here please can you really tell me something? Can we really be honest? Can we, 
and it, it, that will eventually get on someone's nerves. Right. So let, let's claim independence from unnecessary arguments. As a matter of fact, let's just say let's, let's claim independence from arguments, but not necessarily spirited disagreements. <laughs> okay. Because those are going to happen, you know. But you got to have rules of engagement so that way it's done properly. No, exactly. And the last thing that we absolutely positively need to claim independence from dishonesty or lying, telling stories, however you you say it, whatever your vernacular is for not telling the truth, not being honest. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, look, you have to be, we always talk about having a hot marriage, honest, open, and transparent, hot. Um, hot. Hot. But it's one of those things where it ha the very first word was honest. Because there has to be truth. Honesty is is a byproduct of the truth, you know, living in the truth. And we have to have truth in our marriage. That's the only way you can, ha without honesty, there can be no vulnerability. There can be no transparency. There can be, because if I can't trust that I can come to you and bear my soul to you, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, I have to be able to trust you, right? I have to be know that what you're giving me is an honest representation of who you are. Exactly. So, and let me let me say too, when we when we're talking about the dishonesty, I'm I'm not talking about the obvious. Oh, he had an affair, or she was messing around. We're talking about being honest about your feelings, um, about how something made you feel. Because if you just be like, oh, it's okay, it's okay, but it really is not okay, then eventually, that's going to create a huge problem. A huge problem. Huge problem. You have to be able to, you, more than anything else, we want you to be your true, authentic self within your marriage. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that's, that's, that's the only thing that you should be, only you that you should be anyway, authentically you. Because if you're not, then you're lying all day long, you right. know? And, and authenticity is almost... A synonym for honesty right is that a, is that an honest document man is that is that honestly the the real McCoy the real thing are you transparent transparent yeah what's the word it is transparent yeah transparent <laughs> Ooh, somebody's definitely tired I was like, wait, that's so, not the word. <laughs> but these are the things we want to claim independence from so look the day that this this podcast is being released is on July Sixth, July sixth. We are declaring it for you. We're claiming marriage independence from these five things: from mis miscommunication, from lack of privacy, from unrealistic expectations, from dishonesty, and arguments. So there you have it. Go out, shoot your fireworks burn the neighborhood down like it looks it sounds like ours is um and claim your independence from those things that are doing damage to your marriage that's it ultimately mm -hmm. we named five things but there might be other things that we didn't discuss yeah and yeah I was, and that's a good point that you said that because maybe you don't have a problem with lack of privacy or you know you guys keep it in house and you're not telling everyone your business but there could be something different so take an inventory of the things that are keeping you from having the stellar phenomenal marriage that you want and really have an honest discussion about it, about what those things are that are preventing you from going to the next level that are keeping you stagnant in your marriage and mean, like, okay, so, and, and then figure out a plan on how to deal with that. How do we get past this? How do we move forward? And if you have tr trouble, like I'm having trouble obviously speaking today, if you there's a challenge, then go to our website and <laughs> book a coaching call, a yeah. discovery call, I'm sorry. Yep, so today, congratulations on your independence from those things, but work on it. It is work, it's it, fun work. Yeah, it's fun work. I mean, th th there's work in everything, you know. So why not get You're gonna the pay dividends? the price, right? One way or the other. Right. So go out there, claim your independence, and until the next time, be blessed. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>